Tabaruka, I'm from Jamaica. I'm an a artist, a poet, and a radio talk show host and a radio station named IRFM in Jamaica. Um, Brethren Omar, who is responsible for my visit here, he, um, he came to me and introduced me to this aspect of Islam that I didn't know about. You know, I've been to many different places, but I've never heard of this aspect of Islam. So he explained it to me, and I had him on the radio station doing an interview to explain to Jamaica what is this all about. You know, he said, well, he wanted to invite me here to see for myself what it is all about. So I accepted the invitation because I wanted to hear, so to speak, from the artist's mouth. Because most of the, 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 the news that we get is coming from the, the Western media. And the Western media to me is not really reliable when anything is not American or British. So I came with the understanding that I would try to find out what is this aspect of Islam all about. Um, I have heard and I've read some things about um, the ostracizing of this aspect because it is talking about a prophet of Muhammad. I think that is the main thing that comes in conflict with other aspects of Islam. Um, whereas most Islamic Muslim people say that Muhammad is the last prophet. I am now seeing and hearing that um, they don't see Muhammad as the last prophet, but there is a prophet after Muhammad who is almost Christ. -like. So we come to understand it. We want to understand it because I love to hear for myself and see for myself what, what it is all about. So when I speak, I can speak with authority, especially when I'm on the radio. I can speak with authority, so here I am. So, you spoke to me a bit about what brought you to the Chelsea UK. Tell me, uh, I know it's only been one day, we've only had uh, a yeah. Friday sermon so far, but what's been your your impressions of... of I don't have any impression right now, because I just came. Mm. I just came last, I was in the hotel room since I come, I was sleeping, because okay. it was flight from Jamaica non-stop, so... I was in the hotel room all, it's the first I'm going to leave the hotel room on this level. So, over the course of the day and tomorrow, you can call me and ask me again. And I then, look forward to finding out. Yeah, and then I will see, I will tell you, give you a good, um, what, what I think. Yeah, know. yeah, I look forward to finding out from you. Yeah, man. Um, uh, thank you very much so far, That's, that is exactly what we needed, just to yeah, man. an Deep insight into, yeah, man. into what actually... I'm looking forward to the weekend, I'm looking forward to yeah. it. Yeah, because it, you know, it, it's interesting to find out what what uh, draws people towards such an event. Well, I was uh, told that I am the first Rastafari brethren that is going to come to a, 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 um, a conference like this. So, I guess I broke the ceiling and we'll see what going to take place. You know. Great. It's a pleasure to have you. Yeah, man, Thank you, you very much. Yeah, man, you too. Um, the reason we invited him is because that is their own? That's no, many, that's many members of our community <laughs> respect the fact that he's straightforward. And that's what we like and um, as a Muslim community in Jamaica, like, we, we felt that many people that come from Christian backgrounds, it was something new for them. So there was a lot of misunderstandings and fear. And I was actually amazed at, because it takes courage in a country like that, because I see many people are shy to come to our mosque. We've invited many government officials, many ministers, um, and have, uh, and I can tell um, there's a type of shyness um, that to, for them to be seen with us. And so when I when we got in touch with Muta, and he showed interest that he wants to come, we were actually surprised because it, it, again it takes courage that he he was willing to be publicly seen with us. And, oh, yeah. Because uh, it's because of AIDS. no, because because of the whole Muslim thing, right? And, yeah, and we've been to I've been to voodoo ceremonies in okay, Haiti, okay. and I've been to juju ceremonies in Nigeria. Okay, okay. And so. I've been to cathedrals. Mm -hmm. I've been to Saint Peter's Basilica. Okay, okay. You know, so I don't more feel away from Saint Peter's Basilica than anywhere else, but I've been there because. 
I am a one who I want to experience the thing. Yeah. You know, because I feel that you can get knowledge through education, but you have to get wisdom through experience. Right, right. So I get wisdom through experience and being here is an experience mm -hmm. and you have to talk with the authority. Yeah. So you shouldn't well I guess you're surprised there, but I, I don't I don't I, I've been to so many places unbelievable. You know, I've been to come places with Jamaica and never go yet. You know the the thing is when people saw you come to the mosque? It, it opened up a lot of people. Oh yes. Yeah, because they're like mutas going there. Yeah, they um, also are going there. Food right, there. right. Yeah. So yeah, it's like when we eat certain food, I tell you, that's why I'm going to eat that food to I read a book. Yeah. You're yeah. happy with me. Yeah, yeah. No, it is. It, it's important that we can't be scared mm -hmm. because sometimes it's, it's fear. The greatest fear is fear, you know. Right. right. So if you if you fear. My wife went to Istanbul and people in Jamaica said, No, you can't go to Turkey, you're mad, they're blow people there. Yeah. And it's one of the most enjoyable times I have, even though they show me the places where I was bombed. Mm -hmm. But it's one of the most enjoyable times I have my wife I'm outside of Jamaica okay, to okay. go to Turkey. See me with Morocco. Right. You know, so I don't really, and if you could have afford it, you would like love come to. Okay. Because that is not really something where the fear factor is not in you. Maybe it's into to a point, but after a while you have to forget the fear mm -hmm. and deal with the, what is the situation, what you want to achieve out of a visit like this, mm -hmm. or what you want to achieve in visiting certain places. So mm -hmm. I tell them, say, I don't go to Syria right now. Yeah. No, it means a lot because uh, as a representative of Jamaica, when people see you and, yeah. and you're, you're mingling and mixing with Muslims in different yeah. communities, um, I, even last time when you came to our conference, you know, we had some neighbors that were afraid of coming to the mosque. Oh, yeah, and then some Muta over there, they yeah, so Now, now they regularly, and I can see their minds are at ease. Uh, yeah. The Muta's coming there, he's one of ours, and um, you know, so it, it really, and that's what we're trying to achieve um, through this trip also, is that you, you take this experience back to the Netflix. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and let them know what I want. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> it, it is. Yeah, I mean, looking for another level, another level is to me, you know. Maybe I'll try, try a trip to Mecca. <laughs> Maybe I'll try a trip to Mecca oh. <laughs> and carry my bridges. So. You don't go to Mecca? No, you don't no go to Mecca. I haven't been to Mecca yet. No. You sure. intend to go? Well, it, it, it depends on if I can afford it right now. I can't afford, can it. afford it. Yeah, man, I mean, you can't afford it, man. You must afford Thank it. you very much yeah, for man, talking to me. It's very, you're blessed, man. You're, you seem like a very inspirational person. Keep Even talking. just hearing you now. Yeah. Say. I get myself in a trouble and I get an inspirational person too. <laughs> <laughs> I get myself in a trouble with an inspirational person. <laughs> yeah.
question. But I appreciate you giving me the chance to ask the question. First, um, the, the, the speaker before was talking about the failure of Pan-Africanism to the cause of liberation of African people. Now, to us in Jamaica, Marcus Garvey is the father of Pan-Africanism. And Marcus Garvey, if you read the philosophy and opinion of Marcus Garvey, he actually speaks about one God, one aim, one destiny. The reason why I think the, the speaker spoke about failure of Pan-Africanism is because Kwame Nkuma was a socialist. And most of the leaders at that time who were talking about Pan-Africanism were socialists. And even though Marcus Garvey influenced a lot of the Pan-Africanist movement, they skip out the part about spirituality and the culture. So I don't really accept that Pan-Africanism feared. What feared was the leaders who choose not to interject or inject God in the Pan-Africanist movement. And the last thing I would like to ask, I, I, I think I'm ignorant because I am not really a Muslim. I would like to ask, is there a reason why there are no women sitting at the table? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for your contribution and for your question. I'm going to also direct this to our respected Amisa Dharma to please respond. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for your contribution and for your question. I'm afraid if I say I didn't understand him very well, uh, maybe he's leading you, but uh, but there's very, very no, I don't see any difference between what, what uh, I said and uh, I have no what he has said. said. It is it's true that, that the leaders were well, socialists, there's no doubt about that. And that, that is what I alluded to, that, that they, they divorced God, God from, from the whole center. And then they divorced God, they divorced God and religion, and religion from, from it, which, which led to the collapse, the failure of pan Africanism. So, so yes, yes, I agree with him perfectly well, 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 yes, it is true. It's just, just like when we talk of Africa, like, like we talk of my country, Ghana. I always tell him that it's wrong for you to say that Ghana is poor. I always say that Ghana is not poor. Ghana is where we are now. We have everything. God has given Ghana everything. It is the people of Ghana who are poor.
is your impression about this Pan-African event tonight? Well, I thought there would be more participation of everyone. You know, I mean, I, I, I didn't even know that there was writing down question. I thought there would be, since there was so much people in there, I thought we would hear more participation of everyone in there. So two people speak and that's it, and two people. Okay, that, that's fine. But um, personally, what role do you think um, this movement, Pan African, because there have been a lot of arguments, there have been a lot of philosophies and so on and so forth that we cannot make it. Do you think Africa... We cannot make it. The argument has been that Who said Africa... That? Who said Africa? Africa, Who said Africa said there, there, there are some theorists, even among some Africans, that within the economic and political constraints is going yeah. to be difficult. Yeah. Do you see that view as completely untold? Do you think there is still light at the end of the tunnel after the challenges that uh, Africa continues to go through? Well, I don't know who asking these questions, but, but it, it's stupid question. Because if you look at all the nations of the world right now that it seem to be progressing, they were once down there. You know, Africa for thousands of years have been the vanguard in civilization. And what happened is that the continent was raped and people were taken from the earth. Mm. We don't believe that Africa will always be what people is claiming it to be right now because we know that things work in cycles, 260 degrees cycle. You know? Africa was once great and it will be great again. Because we believe in a Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey show us a thing named race first. Right. And Africa for Africans right. goes so, home and so sorry for the world. rude interruption. How how could we be great again when we don't seem to control anything? When no, decisions that is what, that who said that who don't control anything? Who said no not control? When decisions are taken by the West, where where the West seems to China is not in the West, but make I tell you something. Most of the African leaders have been educated in Europe and they try to use European philosophy and ideology to rule a people that cannot be governed by neither socialism, communism, nor democracy. We have to return to the institutions that was there before slavery, before the Arabs come there, before the Chinese come there, and before the Europeans come there. We had a, we had a civilization that we need to understand it, and the only way we can understand it is to find leaders who is not treated, taunted by these white supremacist powers that has maintained a grip on society. And if African leaders continue, this is where the pessimism might come. Because if African leaders continue, to view Africa from a European or an Arab perspective, not, it's not going to happen. Mm. The, 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 the redemption of Africa is not going to happen. We have to find our Africanness, our African perspective. Right. Would you say we need to find our own form of democracy? No. We have to find, there's no own form of democracy. Communism, socialism, democracy is European construct. All of them started in Rome. It's European construct. What were the Africans doing? Before the African, before the Arabs in slavery, and before the Europeans in slavery. We had our own institution. The intellectuals need to return to that understanding of Africanness. They need to go back to what were the Africans doing before the Arabs got here? What were the Africans doing before the Europeans got here? If we don't find that, the civilization that we want will never be there because we are governed by political, social, religious perspectives from aliens who have no interest in Africa. Africa needs to find itself as how Africa was before these people come and invade Africa. You see? And if we continue to maintain religions and political ideas from Europeans and Arabs, Africa will never be free. That is what we really was saying. Because we know what we're supposed to do. But we're using European logics 
to govern itself. Talking about socialism, communism, and democracy. Africans don't know nothing about socialism, communism, and democracy. We never name it. Just like how we have art. There's no, there's no abstract art in Africa. Every art is usable. As Europeans come, come put art on the wall. We do have no significance to me. Right. We have to find that. We have to find that connection. Now, wait now, we can tell you what, what happened now. You see, when the, when the Britain talk about Marcus, they, we talk about up, all African, Pan Africanism. When we learn from Marcus Garvey, one God, one aim, one destiny. Marcus Garvey had talked about the image of God. That God must appear to the people them, like all the people them who's worship him look. So when you have Jesus from the wall looking like somebody else, if you notice, if you notice Buddha, Buddha in India, the image of Buddha in India is totally different from the image of Buddha in Japan. <coughs> it's, only, it's only black people come out of themselves for worship a God that don't look like them. Right. Uh, some African leaders have uh, advocated some of your teachings. You look at uh, Muammar al-Gaddafi and uh, he was killed. And then yes. we, we know the circumstances that led to his death. Robert Mugabe is also advocating some of these tenets. And we know that the Zimbabwean economy is in tatters. We know where those responsible for that. Do you still nurture the hope that African leaders can go by the principles that you espouse? Yeah, because the people them is still subjugated to a, a European logic and understanding of governance. Why man like Mugabe and Gaddafi is not recognized. You see? We have to have a, a, a different kind of education from people who is embedded in the, the purity of Africa. Not the mix-up of Africa, what we see happening here now. The leaders of Africa is designed. It's some designer African leaders we have. Most of them education come from Europe. Them religion come from Europe and Arabia. We need African, like Marcus Garvey said, Africa for Africans, those at home and those abroad. Mm. But we need Africans who is educated in African philosophy, African spirituality, and African way of governance. And young people now is recognizing this too. If you do, that's why it's so much rebellion amongst young people. Because young people recognize about what their parents were saying. Don't get them anywhere. Them sit down on the veranda talking about Jesus who come. And them dead and Jesus still don't come for them. See? So it's an it's, it's, it's a, it's a other way of thinking we need. We need a different way of thinking. You see? That is what we need. Right. We want to thank you very much. Yeah, man. Give time. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah. Rasta, man. <laughs> What was the Africa doing 100 years before slavery? What was the black man doing 200 years before slavery? Come lie down. What was the Africa doing 100 years before slavery? And the the question. What was the black man doing 200 years before slavery? Like them people that have nothing to do with health food at all, they have nothing. They don't care about them something.
Yeah, I got the bridge in the same one. You stop on it. Not even for laugh for them up the man. Good old um for laugh. Falafel, Falafel. You know, it's a name there. Show me the name. Take out. Alright. Oh, you're coming. For you as well. So, what do you Oh, can you do it? Okay. One of my Jamaican friends in Germany know you. Oh, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to show him the picture. <laughs> oh, yeah? He said that you are the, one of the best. Poet, poet, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's so glory, it's glory, it's glory. Nice one. Alright, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Every time I India, you have Buddha. 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 That bread we want you. Okay. Exactly. Salam no, man, you can't bring me come here, I'm going to go to Porto Bello Road. Thank you very uh, much yesterday, uh, yes. so much. thank you so much yes, for joining us for our Pan African Swiss. Yes, you remember? Yes, our, yes, uh, yes, I remember. Never bless you very much. Yes. And then also, have you been to our, oh, I mean, our small decks? We have Pan African Media Muslim Association. We've got a small decks here. Yes. It would be nice if you Tomorrow, pass it. tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. I, I need tomorrow. to go home now, tomorrow. No, no worries at all. So yes. tomorrow, inshallah, when you pass here, yes. this is the first one. Uh, one. Yeah. So please bring him around in there. Thank you very much. Yeah? Okay, then here I see you. Then here. Assalamu alaikum. Yes. You didn't know I'm not going to speech. You didn't know I'm not going to speech. You didn't know I'm not going to speech. The man tell me two minutes, I'm at me me say too short oh, no, with no, you no, anyway. I'm stopping the two minutes. No one of them stop me. Oh. I input two minutes in my head from there to them. I put two minutes in my head. No, but everybody else was roughly that two, three minutes. No, me never no, say no. But me just say, they the not just say, oh. me, me program right. myself for two minutes, so yeah. me never get to say what I want to say. After yeah. I want to say. Oh, them three minutes, they have four hours, and then they have half an hour to the time. How is it going? Yes, definitely. I'm not sure if you remember wonderful, me. Wonderful, wonderful speech. Yeah, I remember the first one. Yeah, I was the first one. Yeah, was the first one. <laughs> How's it going? It's a wonderful speech. At two minutes, with it? That's enough. Sometimes it's enough. Two, two minutes, minutes is enough. enough. Okay. okay. How have you found? Less is more sometimes. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Yes, okay. I like it. Remember, I did say to you that I do Snapchat as well. Um, I was wondering if we could get you to oh, yeah, you to hold the board, it. all of you guys, but. If you could tell me a bit about your experience on Snapchat, would that be okay? Tomorrow we do that. Tomorrow, not today. Yeah, no, okay, today is finished. Tired, long. Tired. Uh, no, I don't tire, okay. but today is finished. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah. okay. My mother is going to beat me. Ah, still. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. I'll see you later. My, my. No man, Khalifa, Khal. The man, the, the man we attack, the head man. The head man, the sit at the table there. Where they yeah, them more have got strong. You know I'm gonna. For what? I mean, I eat nothing. It's gonna look awkward. Let me go sit down. Eh? No, 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 no. No, I'm going to sit down now. I'm going to look at the board. You're not eating nothing. Just watch this. Sitting around the dining table, don't make your diner. Your cameraman. Yeah. Take a picture. Yeah, don't be in the picture, bro. I like the presentation today as well. Yeah, man, you're down. And yesterday, your question, I liked it as well. Okay. All right. See you, man. You have a lot of fans in Gambia. I know. I know. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a citizen. Yeah. I know your, your relationship with Jamie. Yeah. And you too. I know. I know. We're not running. I know. Keep the flag up, man. Keep the flag up. All right. It's not a flag, though. Red, yeah. Colors, yeah. 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 Good boy, yeah. good Keep yeah. the colors strong, man. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know, though. I didn't know. I didn't know it was on the floor. No. I would have never make it run. I have to respect them, man. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good boy. Yeah, good boy. Stay good, man. Yeah. So we just complete three days of uh, conference 
I don't want to call it conference because it, 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 it kind of out of the bounds of a conference as we know conferences. Um, outside of London, we were told by the stage a while ago that it's 37,000 people attended. You know, um, over the years we've been going to different places. We have been to voodoo ceremonies, we've been to Yoruba ceremonies, we've been to Buddhist, Buddhist temples. We even sit down amongst the This is kind of different to me because I know about Islam, but I know it through hearsay and I also know about the nation of Islam, which everybody know, Louis Farrakhan in America developed this um, this, this nation out of Elijah Muhammad, out of a man named Farad. There are certain similarities between the Ahmadiyya and the, the black Muslims in terms of belief and how it, 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 it kind of unorthodox in the Muslim tradition. And I guess that is why Ahmadiyya is ostracized, would I call them ostracized. They are outside of the realms of the, the orthodox Islam because they have found the Majidi, the Majidi, what they call the, the promised Messiah, just like nation of Islam who declare that Farad Muhammad is the is God from the 1930s them say that and Elijah Muhammad preached that and now we hear Farrakhan come preach that what we see in this um, Ahmadiyya community is that them are talk about a return Messiah but them don't believe as the Orthodox Muslim believe that Jesus Christ that individual going to come back again. With them actually I say that he already come back in the 18, in the 1880 something. I don't remember the exact time, but it's in the 1880s. He actually come back in the person of an individual in India. And I find that very interesting because a lot of connection make with the sea of the time when Farad Muhammad um, appeared and was seen as recognized as God in Elijah Muhammad organization and also when Rastafari in the 1930s when Ayla Selassie get crowned and him was recognized also as a messiah. So what we have now is, a, is, 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 is a group of people who are recognized a messiah upon a next level. And the Ahmadiyya group actually has said that the Messiah come already. And him coming at that person. And is, in other words, no, Muhammad is not the last prophet. He is a major prophet, but he is not the last prophet. Which that kind of collide with how Islam recognize the thing. And I think that is why they have to leave. They, 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 they have to leave India. I end up in Pakistan and then you have to move to Pakistan. I end up in England because the headquarters was in Pakistan and it started in India. And now we find them headquarters here. But it seems to me that they have progressed for a level where it's unprecedented with most young group of art, truth, religious practice, beliefs. Because we hear of them, 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 them get like a one year, you know, like most conferences, they might tell you about what they do over a period of time. And it's quite an achievement, I tell you. And if you see them have a mask in a Jamaica, Clarin Land, because that is how I know about them. And you know, a lot of people pass this mask and don't even know what they're going on. So people don't see it, they sit down there. 
I had the opportunity to go there because I'm invited. That is why we really actually reached England and so because of that invitation. So. And we had them on the program, the cutting edge program, at all. But in a short space of time, we can't see a development and for even have 37,000 people in a kind of conference, festive kind of atmosphere. Because we are saying not just a conference, it's really a conference with a festive festive atmosphere where they might present themselves after 50 odd years. I think it's 51 years them say after 51 years, they might present themselves and say this is we, this is what we want to do. We are trying to change the face of Islam as you know it. We are trying to show the people them say this is the way Muslims are supposed to behave and this is how they're supposed to go about things. And when we hear about Islam, radical Islam, and where they go with, that is not Islam. This is what it is. This is how it is. And really, it's the first I got a conference and see so much people from all different nations, so much places. I mean, we're a book of 80s in a limousine. Me and two eighties sit down and them say them are come here so because them say they might do work in a in a um Ireland. Them do Ireland, them do a work them in a the community, in the Amadia community, them do work there. We see Buddhists, me and the Buddhist town friend. Him, he, as a matter of fact, he actually invite me now to come to Los Angeles, which he have a group of about twelve women with him. Where well, all of them is Vietnamese, but they live in California, Los Angeles. I mean, well, California. They live in California. All of them is, is, is Vietnamese. They them born in, a, in, a, in America, but they actually is Vietnamese from Vietnamese parentage. And him is a Buddhist. We see people so much. I mean, I've been to Ghana and I've been to Ivory Coast already, but I never know, say, the Amadea community was so big in Ghana. As a matter of fact, I am told that when them have conference in Ghana, it is it is three times the size of what we just said a while ago. And that is Ghana. And I meet a whole heap of my bridge in there. Well, not my bridge in them personally, but the last time I got to a show in Gambia, them was there. And like me, I talk about enough of them gang me down. Every minute I see them, they want to take picture. These Gambians is part of the Amadea. <clears throat> and we know that the time when I was there, it was Yaya Jamin. And when we asked them if or oh, 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 Gambia still as it really just did, them say it's 50-50. It's, it's a 50-50. And you know, see no, no no problem there as it relates to religion. Because as a matter of fact, Africans really never have a problem with religion. You know, it's, it's, it's land mostly war fight over in Africa. It's, 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 it's since we say all of these three dominant religions, um, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, we see the, the, the fight for land gets so prevalent all over the place. But the Amadea group, our community, as they call themselves, is something to be reckoned with as it relates to Islam. You know, I see that for the past three days when I look at it and when I say, when I hear what they must say and when I see the movement, and you know, me not a gullible person, because it now changed me, Rastafari said we, but we can analyze as an open minded person and recognize where Islam is, where people perceive it to be, and what they might try to do as it relates to really. Concretize them place in a, the Islamic society. I think if them get opportunity, them, them can really reverse that outlook where people have about Islam, especially in a Jamaica. I we can't talk about Jamaica because most most Jamaican you tell them say you come up here to them say what mood are you mad? You know, afraid something blow up and something this and that and that. As a matter of fact, I want to tell you. When I come through the airport, which them usually do, them always carry me to a special immigration officer because of how me look. Them always check me if me some African chief or some ras like that. You know, they really. But I took on the line and I hear the man call him to go to the last one on the bottom. When I go down there, it's a woman 
And she said, which part of me is something I tell her? I said, I'm going to Muslim. She said, Muslim? I said, yeah, I'm going to have a Muslim thing. She said, so what are you going to do here? I said, I'm going to observe as a Rasta. I said, oh, you somebody knows you're a Rasta, man. So what are you going to have a Muslim thing for? And I realized, oh, you're a Jamaican. She said, yeah, man, I'm a Jamaican, man. But why? I can't take them with a Muslim thing. You know, so what do I do? I said, well, I hear that still. Me hear that still, but me really personally like to observe for myself. Because where the eye behold, the art we understand. And really, we get the opportunity to go up on the stage there yesterday. And we talk about that in a two minutes. We mention the idea of how people's perspective is as it relates to Islam in a Jamaica. From the what Islam is supposed to be talking about BAM. Like all my cameraman, you know. Every time I look at him, I think about a man who have a bam in his knapsack. Because he's balling and he's a beard. And I me, me, me profile him that way. There. I saw me profile him, you know. Balling and beard, knapsack and back. Watch them. They have a bam tie up at them. You understand? So it's a profile thing. And the way you, the news media project it, you would have feel say, yeah, it's so it goes. But you see, I couldn't, couldn't take that view there. You know why I couldn't take that view there? Because Rastafari is the most persecuted group of people in Jamaica. I remember when every Rasta did nasty, dirty. A dirty people, them, them not have no sense. Them not intelligent. Them are chat damn foolish about Africa and that still has a God and them something there. And when me reflect on them thing there, I would have to stop, stand back from the normal Jamaican idea of understanding people and about we. If me did go through that, why me must take the same view as other people know about the next man thing? No, me have to go investigate that. Me can't, me, me can't, go, me can't go cast stone upon things where me know was a detriment to African people, was a detriment to the people them who are striving and survive for acceptance in the earth. Me not a religious person. But if a man want to use religion to take himself out of certain things, who is me to say that? And now I say, we as Rasta use Rastafari to counter white supremacy and colonialism. We see people in a Jamaica who is Christian, come here and cast a stone and say, why, every Christian is an idiot. But I don't like the philosophy because that is the thing that me come grow up, come see. Implant in our system and make black people turn food in Jamaica. Just like the political system where them call democracy and communism. This is it don't work for black people. No, we see this thing here. Uh, it's a half shoot of Islam. And we are saying, alright, if it is a half shoot of Islam and it'll try to carry the people them to a level where, alright, this is what we know about Islam. This is what we are shown about Islam. I think say, you know, it 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 it's gonna reach us, it's gonna reach a level. It's gonna reach a level where people have to confront it. It have to reach a level where people have to say but we it. And that them that we, we, we find it with Rasta too. We find it with Rasta. When people come here so and Rasta thing and say, why the Rasta they sound sensible, you know. And me just an individual because you have only for Rasta we find themselves in another situation the way. Them did have a perception and a view about me all the while. And then now we come show them say, but we you don't have to love me now, but you have to respect me. Because my views is, 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 is views where you have to confront with right now. So I look at them and they think now, I say, Islam have to confront them as it relates to how they move. And the, the power where they are honest and gather. You can't now come say now, you go and go fight against them like how you are fight against the people them who you claim America, England and all them places. You see, because then now you're gonna show up yourself. If if Islam as we know it, radical Islam, start to now declare war upon the Ahmadiyya um, community, them can't win because one has said a love and peace and the other one has said, well right now them are not real most Islam. So them are going to who you think are gonna win? Them can't win because the people them know, even though them is not Muslim, them are gonna say, no, but them people that deal with peace and love and not deal with war against them on own people. No, it can't work. It, because we can't see Sunni and Shiite are war, you know. 
But soon as Shia a war is not visible to the people them who is not Muslim. You see, because them know them are five, but I, the five are in a Jamaica now. You can't tell Jamaican people about Sunni and Shia. Them hear the name them, you know, but them can't identify why is it that Sunni are fight Shia and Shia are fight Sunni. But now, if you have a group of people who are say, alright, you know what is Islam? Islam is love for all and hatred for none. Islam is developing the minds of the people them working with community that we see all ETs are work with the community in a in a in a in a in a um, Ireland. If me never come here, we know that. We see ministers from Africa I work with the community and I develop people in a them community. So what we see the radical is uh, is, 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 is um, Muslims them do. I kill people and I declare say if you don't deal with all them seed, you are infidel. Uh, you deserve to be dead and them to cut off your head. Now me as a non-Muslim, I go look on it and I go say, but wait, me see them people are I develop certain people who is not Muslim. And me see you over there so I kill people because them are not Muslim. Then who you think are loads? Who are loads? And that's what I was searching for now, you know. Because I could have never got to defend a man who, because I am not Muslim, and because the other man is a Muslim, but not if him kind of Muslim, you can kill him. I have to defend the man who me look for him and I say, but wait, you see that man then build a school over there, so you know. You see that man there, he may work on certain projects in the community, if you bring light and water or whatsoever there. And that would have work when, you see me can maintain my level of Rasta, and me can still say, I am Rasta for you know. So that is really what the people them need to understand. The people them need to understand say it's not a matter of becoming something other than what you don't want it to be. It's a matter of recognizing the truth about the something that you over there never recognize all the while and start to really believe say, boy, that thing over there. So true, you don't like it. You start to paint it a certain way, and then you follow the Western media now. And then when the Western media say, well, all right, that man blow up a prison, you know, he's Muslim. You start to say, blood clot. Me not like them, you know. Act like all the immigration, immigration woman tell me. Because if me did, if me did freak out, you know, I would have gone like, say, Lord, not really them, I go, you know, but I come up front to her and say, what you know, I'm Muslim, me, me, I go. I'm a Rasta. And she glad for you to say, I'm a Rasta. And then she started to ask me, you know, you know, you're a Rasta, like a Muslim meeting. I mean, I said, but with all this Muslim, it's like one time I come to the immigration and I really like, no man, they, 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 not the woman, the immigration man, I look at me and I tell me something. Jesus is the only way, you know. I say, oh yeah? I say, yes. You know, everybody else, I mean, the Bible says that. And I said, why am I telling me that? Why am I telling me that? Because how me look. And I want to divert me now from my look and not, not stop me. When you see me you now, this now, me, me, me confronted with this now. I mean, as you say. I see what I see. You know the three days I'm there, I see what I see. I make, 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 make it indelible in my consciousness. And I can't say, well, watch out. There's a part of the thing where even though you hear it, say it there, but it's good when you see it there. Because you can't hear it, say it there, and you say, hey, so we are here. Yeah, that's what they might tell you. But me no see, me see where it there. Just like when I look for Farrakhan, I see Farrakhan as a brethren. I see him as a brethren, even though other people don't like him. But he is another kind of Muslim where it's ostracized. It's a part of Muslim now where maybe all them man wouldn't accept him neither. You know what I see? But I see where he might do. He might defend black people thinking from him environment and how we might develop to so we might use the religion to confront for him community and that is the beauty about it because black people all the while never get to use religion to confront them reality yet them always take it as it is like what them take Christianity from, from white people and just slam bam ex, ex, um, accept it what them people are though is take a religion and use it in a freedom community and develop it to show people say why well, this is how it really is supposed to be. You know, see, when Farah can take it, and Farah can say, Farah Muhammad is God, even though he's Arab, and he might defend African people, think, nation of Islam, listen, he might use it 
for benefit him, just like when we look on Buddha in a India, the image of Buddha in a India different from the image of Buddha in a Japan. The big fat Buddha is a Japanese in Chinese Buddha. The slim Buddha is the one in a one in a India. Right? So we recognize that everybody has used the religion to bring about a cohesiveness amongst the people them where he might direct the religion to. You understand? And that is really what I see as so now. I see say, them man here, they might direct the religion to a community where them feel say, this is how it's supposed to work and this is the best way it can work. You know see? So you will get you will get less fire by your head if you show practically what you're doing. So when you say Islam, where you are well, so where we are there, we have schools, we have colleges, we have do certain community work, we have the community them, anywhere we find ourselves, we start to develop the community there. You understand? That is really the way it is. And that now tell you, say, you have to go turn Muslim. Because that is very important to the whole thing, you know. Because I hope a man will come to you now and say, you have to get converted. If you do, that is where they might try to still, you know. Without a doubt, you know, they might try to convert you still, you know. You know, it's like they might throw something at the thing and, you know, for, for, for you catch it and thing. Everybody do that. Even Rasta do that. Then someone say, boy, Rasta, if, if you don't say, I still have to say, you're going to you know, them thing. Everybody do that. That's why religion to me is a fuck up, you understand? Know because every man I try, he might help still, you know, but him know, say, he would have been, you know, been better off if it was female, female religious persuasion, you know, see? But, it's a true me ticket that I already know. He can't catch me that way there. But me can recognize the work. You understand? The work is where it's the important thing, you know. And that is where now we're going to separate the wolf, which is a radical thing, from the sheep. You understand? I'm not going to eat the sheep because I'm not eat meat. I'm not saying that way there. I love animals. I'm not eat them. You understand? So we work with it. We work with it. So, I just say, over the three days, this is where it show me. And, and I can't see it for where it is. And I appreciate that the bridge in who the bridge didn't invite me. We have seen that too. Come on, come over here, some bridge. We are here kind of a wrap up of the day, the week. Take a seat, take, take a seat or something. Ah, this is the bridge who invite me. So, I never even know that I come. But I come. And I really appreciate them invite me at all. This is Abridgin from uh, India, Pakistan. Originally Pakistan. Originally Pakistan. And you know the British go down there and separate India and call part Pakistan and I. And now he is living in Jamaica. He is the man who invited me to come up to this place because I feel say I can see something and then can give me a, a critical him knows say I'm not gonna change me still. Mm -hmm. But him knows say well why right now I'm open minded enough to say. This is what and this is not. I don't know if you hear what I say, but I'm not sure say what I see is appreciative in terms of we wanna try achieve as it relates to radical Islam versus Islam. I mean I go say true Islam. I say radical Islam, the man may blow up the place from the one them who are saying no right now. We must come together everybody and when we see what we do we want to carry people from all different persuasions and perspectives yeah? which to me personally that is good because we never go to a conference when we see that and it's not only a conference to me but it's like a festival so you want to have a conference festival when we love that you understand so I'm a bridge you know so things say the place is going to blow up <laughs> if come down, they love it. If inside, they say I love it. Even though man sleep, I only by the time. But if I love it, that's sad. So, and my brethren, you know, him know. Anytime I look at him, he me think same as a radical Islam because him the ball he don't have beard, and him always have naps up on him back. So I don't really trust him to that. You know, but me and him are work together good. No. As I say in front of the mic, I thank you for inviting invite me at all. I appreciate the invitation and I recognize it as something positive moving forward in Islam. As it relates to Islam, it's a very positive thing in Islam that people need to know that 
Islam is Islam. And you don't have to add nothing for it. You don't have to add radical Islam, bad Islam, good Islam, good Muslim, bad Muslim. And the people them, who the eye them, who the man them are help. All you have to do is go and do the work. Because by your deeds you know the man. Right. See, so, I mean, we know you want to convert some of it still, but the work, we work that out. <laughs> Let's see, the work world, because you are a Jamaican now. They don't like the preaching too much, you know, because them see politicians come and trick them, and them see preachers come, come trick them. Mm -hmm. So, them don't really want to hear no more about no more this and this and this, especially like how oh, every night them go home, them turn on them TV, mm -hmm. them see the negativity. You as a man, you is not an Atlas or a Superman can come change that thing in there by telling them something else. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if them see your work now, yeah, if them see say, well, all right now, why the Muslim the nice is man, I wonder it's what you know, it's what move him, I push him, motivate you. It's a spirit of Islam that motivate you. Them are more grass spirit, you know, but as I say, I give thanks. We give thanks. So the man invite you. All right, I'm not going to if you say nothing, you can't move now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you say love. Yes. So, as we say, three days, three days done, we just go and go see where it happened, and so we, we can really help, for, for really motivate the people them and show them, say, you know, there's something going on where it's not as popular as BBC, and that's popular at CNN. But there's something that is happening as it relates to Islam. And if you have that conviction, you need to know about that something. Ah, uh, my, my, my Islamic friend. Yes, uh, yes, we, yes. Yes, um, well, I'm from Jamaica. Yes, please. Well, there are a lot of people in Jamaica, the old um, Muslims and Islam, as, just like what they hear on the news. You know. So you are, you are, you are Muslim? No, I'm a Rastafari. Rastafari. Uh -huh. have, you ever, have you ever heard of the Rastafari? No. Okay, the Rastafari is a group of people who... Get, get number? Rastafarian. Yes. That was the name of Haile Selassie before he became Emperor of Ethiopia. We believe that our God lies in Ethiopia and that we are Africans. You believe that? He, he's saying that he believes that their God is from Ethiopia. And that we are Africans before we are Jamaicans or Trinidadians, we are Africans. So we see Africa first. What I was trying, what I was, I'm, I've been listening to you. I'm trying to find out. I hear you talk about the, um, the, the, the religious aspect of Islam. Is there a political motivation or political aspect of Islam? You see, Islam is very comprehensive religion. So it gives you the guidance with regards to running the governmental affairs and religious affairs, domestic matrimonial, legal. So the Quran, the holy book, contains all the guidance. So it's theocratic then? Pardon? It's theocratic. Yes. Islam is a theocratic. Yes. yes. So you see, during the time of the holy prophet of Islam, he was the head of the state as well as the founder of the religion, the prophet. Okay. So and even during the time of First four Khalifa's successors, Islam was, uh, you know, being run by those Khalifa's. Yeah. They were head of the states as well as spiritual leaders. But now there's a division. So you know, you, you know, see separation of church and state. Now we that. say, see, now the conditions are different. They're under more than 200 countries in the world. So we separate religion from the state. Oh, that's what I asked. Yes. 
So who so the person who run the state would have to be a Muslim? Do they have to yes. be Muslim? You see, if there are quite a number of Muslim states here. You see, there are almost 54 Muslim states in the world. Yes. There, being run by Muslim leaders. So, but they are not spiritual leaders. They can have a, a, a some uh, spiritual guide or a person, but uh, and at the same time, three, four, five uh, leaders of the country or politicians be the follower of his of one spiritual leader. Yeah, yeah. So, as if if we hope that one day when the Ahmadiyya and the true Islam will spread all across the world, then there will be quite a number of Muslim leaders, different head of the states of the countries, who will be Muslims, but be following the one spiritual leader that is Khilafat. Uh, I, I, I notice that, I, I understand the, the, the the movement of the female and the male in Islam and in Orthodox Christianity. Because in Orthodox Christianity, in the church, the women are at one side and the, the men are at, at, at the other side, right? But um, I, from where I'm sitting, from where I'm standing, as a Jamaica, from Jamaica, I find a kind of imbalance when I'm looking in the audience today and see like 10,000 men and how much men on the stage and there's no Muslim women on the stage. You see, Islam says that there should be segregation. This is the oh, so that segregation. This is, this is I spoke. They, they are given free hand to hold their function. So there was a marquee out there. In that marquee, almost 12,000 women were sitting and they were holding their own function. Yeah. They, were, they were independent. They were uh, and, uh, there were some women who were ha were having cameras and they were filming yeah. the total the function. There were some other who were doing security duty, some other jobs. So they are independent. So we believe that they should work independently. And uh, but as far as other opportunities are concerned, <coughs> we are given free hand to get education. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. There, there, there are quite a number of doctors, engineers, yes. teachers, professors. But independence is not separate. So they, they, so they say they feel that they are more comfortable when when they say because we believe that there should be some uh, separate, uh, some uh, you know, some barrier between man and women. Yes, yes. So they should not just mix, uh, mix up. No, uh, all right. Freely mix up, mixing up. Yeah, just just all right. I'm not talking about mix-up, you know. I'm talking about balance. I'm not talking about mix-up. I'm saying that... The balance is that we believe that there's a division of labor among men and women. Yeah. Men have been assigned some different tasks and women different. Mm -hmm. The main duty of a woman is to run their household. Okay. Yeah? To train their children. Eh? Even if they are professionals, they can go out for work. But the responsibility to manage their house is their woman's responsibility. And man is supposed to be the bread bas basket for the family. Right?